When you go to an amusement park, there's a good chance that you'll come out with a relative ranking of the coasters at that park. Even more likely is that you will probably have a clear favorite coaster. I've been to 15 parks, and today, I'm going to rank the number one coasters at each park. Quick disclaimer though, this list will only have 12 coasters, as I'm not including the two alpine coasters I've ridden, or a kiddie coaster I rode at a fair. With that said, let's begin. Number 12. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, representing Magic Kingdom. I like Big Thunder a lot. It has some fun turns, amazing theming, and even a few surprising sharp pops of airtime. Despite this though, it doesn't stand out too much compared to the other coasters on this list, and it is the worst number one coaster I've been on, if that made any sense. Number 11. Expedition Everest, representing Animal Kingdom. The fact that Expedition Everest is second to last on this list should tell you that this is mostly very good coasters, as Expedition Everest is a fantastic ride. The setting for the ride is beautiful, the backwards drop in Helix is fun and surprisingly intense, and the drops and turns in the second half complete the package with some thrill. Expedition Everest is a very fun ride, and the only flaw I can find in it is that I wouldn't mind if it had a few more elements. Number 10. The Incredible Hulk, representing Universal's Islands of Adventure. I know this is going to be controversial, but I'm not a big Hulk fan. It's not that I got headbanging or anything, it's just boring to me. The launch was underwhelming, the roll after was fun, but then the rest of the ride just did nothing for me. I enjoyed it and it's a gorgeous ride along with being a perfect fit for the park, but it just lacked anything to make it interesting for me, especially in the second half. If the valleys had been a bit tighter, or if they could have taken out the mid-course, I would probably like it more, but that would come to the public liking it less, and lower capacity. I do want to give Hulk another chance, but off of my one ride, this is unfortunately where it ranks. Number 9. Revenge of the Mummy, representing Universal Studios Florida. On the opposite side of the spectrum from Hulk, Revenge of the Mummy is one of the most surprisingly good coasters I've ever ridden. The theming is absolutely incredible. Spoiler alert ahead, if I'm not too lazy I will put a text box on screen saying where to skip to, and if you still haven't had time to skip where I told you to skip with me rambling on trying to give you time to skip there, then clearly you're not going to skip. Anyway, there's one scene where there are some fire effects and stuff, and the room actually heats to the point where it legitimately feels like it's on fire. Following all the crazy good theming scenes is a launch better than Hulk's, and a very fun and surprisingly intense layout. Revenge of the Mummy is an excellent ride that you absolutely should not pass up on when you go to Universal. Number 8. Prowler, representing Worlds of Fun. I want to be able to rave about Prowler, and I should be since I'm ranking it above a coaster that I raved about. However, while I remember liking Prowler a lot, that's about all I remember from my one 2014 ride. I know it had some airtime, and it was in the woods, and... Number 7. Rock and Roller Coaster, representing Hollywood Studios. This ride is so, so good, and it does not get talked about as much as it should. Hate on the layout all you want, but when you're riding it, it feels long and interesting, and the theming just makes it that much better. There's also a very forceful launch, and while the turns may not be too special, the three inversions crammed into this ride have some great force and are overall just fun elements. After riding, I was shocked at not only how fun it was, but also how little roughness and headbanging there was. Not a single time did my head touch the restraint. Tower of Terror is commonly thought of as the best Hollywood Studios attraction, at least when I went, which was before Toy Story Land and Galaxy's Edge, but I enjoyed Rock and Roller Coaster a bit more. Number 6. Scream and Eagle, representing Six Flags St. Louis. While this park's lineup may not be superb, the 2020 season has brought me a new number one for the park, and there's no contest most days. Scream and Eagle has been running better than ever, which can be seen by the fact that it has multiple ejector pumps. Normally, there's only one. It hauls through the course with every hill except the first one, giving great floater to strong ejector. The drops off the turns are the strongest moments, all having awesome airtime right after decent laterals. It may be getting older, but Screaming Eagle still runs incredibly well, and I love it. Number 5. Twisted Cyclone, representing Six Flags over Georgia. This RMC may be very small and very short, but I really like what it does have. 
The inversions are fun, the wave turn is nice and floaty, and while it doesn't have many ejector moments, the hills are very tight, giving a very strong airtime that isn't at all sustained. I do think I overrated this ride just a bit in the past, but regardless, it is still a very good ride for its size, and it's a great fit for Over Georgia's lineup. Aside from the ride itself, I love the shade of blue on the track, and that wave turn across the lift makes for a very nice picture. Number 4. Goliath, representing Six Flags Great America. I used to rank Twisted Cyclone above Goliath, but after a few intense hours of thinking about roller coasters, I switched it up. While Goliath's stall may have really disappointed me, that doesn't mean the rest of the ride can't still be really good. The drop on this ride is one of the best that I've ridden, the first turn has a weird but super fun hang timey sensation, the airtime hill gives very good ejector, the dive loop is a whole lot of fun, and the final turn… uh, let's just ignore that part. While Twisted Cyclone may have stronger airtime, I feel that Goliath's layout is a tad bit more complete and fun. This ranking will probably change again in the future because that's just how it goes on my Apple Notes app note titled Credits Slash Rankings. Number 3, Fury 325 representing Carowinds. Red alert, red alert, we have a Fury hater, no we don't. I think Fury 325 is an amazing ride, which is why it ranks in my overall top 5. With that said, no it's not my number 1. The first half is great, with a massive drop, fairly intense turn, and then two super speedy turns. Unfortunately, after the speedy turns, the ride just dies a bit for me. The hive dive lacked force or airtime, and no this isn't me saying that coasters need that to be fun, it's just me saying that I look for airtime and force when that's what an element is trying to do. So people who were going to say something like that in the comments, now you can. Haha. -ha. Anyway. The turn after is rather slow, and while the airtime hills do actually have airtime, the hills were traversed a bit too slow for me to fully enjoy it. I refuse to even mention the helix. So yes, Fury is an excellent coaster, but I just personally like other coasters better. If you don't though, that's cool too. Number 2. Outlaw Run representing Silver Dollar City. This is my favorite RMC. In my eyes, it's the perfect balance of intensity, airtime, laterals, and it's never felt like too short of a ride. It is probably helped just a little bit by the fact that it's located at my favorite park and I'm always in a good mood when I go to ride it, but regardless, it can stand on its own as an absolutely, ridiculously good coaster. One of the things that I like most about it is that it doesn't have a typical RMC layout. The hill and woods forced them into thinking outside of the box, and they ended up with three inversions, the most on a wooden coaster at the time of its opening. Do not pass up on a back row ride on Outlaw Run, it is an amazing experience. Finally, what could number one be except my overall number one coaster, like literally what else could it be that doesn't even make sense, representing Holiday World is The Voyage. What an incredible ride. The airtime is basically non-stop, which makes sense since it has the second most airtime of any coaster on earth. Along with negatives, almost every element will also throw some positives and laterals at you, and these forces all combined to make a coaster beyond anything else that I have ever been on. That's not even all there is though, because the voyage is also insanely well paced. The end of the ride feels just as fast as the beginning, it's ridiculous. Voyage is truly outstanding and, if I'm being honest, has very little in the way of competition to claim this spot. That's it for my rankings of the number ones at every park I have been to. Would you have ranked any of these rides differently? Let me know that or anything else you wish to say to me in the comments, leave a like if you enjoyed as it helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys whenever I get more free time from school.